Hey there. Okay, fourth graders. Now, I know that I'm not there today to start you off, but we have already kind of covered a little bit about um, making quilts. Last week, we talked about Faith Ringgold and the G's Bend Quilters. Well, I decided that you guys can handle something that's going to be a little bit more complicated than what the third graders are doing and something different than the fourth graders are doing. Okay? So this is my plan. We are going to create a G's Bend quilt. Now, remember last week, uh, we talked about Faith Ringgold and the G's Bend Quilting Ladies, okay? Um, they are the descendants of the slaves brought over from Africa and the Caribbean and uh, worked on the plantation there in G's Bend, which is now in Boykin, Alabama. And um, their quilt style is really different. Uh, it is not totally geometric. You see some of the examples here of where the shapes are, they're cut out of scraps. When they made their quilts, they didn't have the luxury of having extra material. They just had to use what they had. So what we're going to do is we're going to design our own G's Bend quilt. And I know you're looking at that going, that is so cool. This was so much fun. Okay. so. You're not going to get this all done today. We're not going to freak out Miss Miss King about that. So what we're going to do today, you've got your idea page. We need to have that. We're going to look at a lot of different G's Bend quilts, okay? And um, when we're looking at the quilts, I want you to kind of sketch out some ideas that look cool to you. Now, remember, we talked about emphasis and balance, those principles of art. Very important. So um, when we're looking at, let's look at some of the, geez, where my G, there they are. I know I have way too many tabs open. Don't even get me started. So the G's Bend ladies, so get, get out your piece of paper and your pencil. These squares, these quilts that they create are so cool because they're so unusual. They're not, you know, like my quilt here. It's, it's rectangles. It's rectangles. A variety of really cool old fabric. You know, I've got some funky things. I've got chickens and hearts. There's a dude on a horse somewhere. Dude on a horse. Printed in purple on blue. I mean, really neat. There's some more chickens. Um, branches and trees and designs and stripes and all kinds of funness. Okay? Now, some of the G's Bend ladies' quilts have solid. Some have some designs on. You see the ladies working here on a G's Bend when they're, it's called a quilting circle because now they're actually stitching the three layers together. By themselves, they would put the top pieces together. And then together, they've got it kind of rolled out so that they can sew from the top through the the padding in the center which it has a specific name and it just went out of my brain and then the bottom layer and the quilting part let me show you my little mini G's bin the quilting part is this so some people make all kinds of loop-de-loops and they have machines that do all of this you know this is just a simple neat little wave design and that's what makes it quilted Yes, Quilted Northern. I know you're thinking that, oh, I know toilet paper. Okay, so yes, this is a little geometric, but it's not exact, and that's okay. I want you to come up with a design. You can have a border on your quilt, or like in some of these other ones, like this one, it doesn't have a border. Do you see how they're just scraps, and they're sewn together? And yeah, you've got some geometric ish shapes. They're a little more free form, right? Um, and when you're working on your design, this is kind of what you call a log cabin design, where you start out with a long length and then it gradually goes around and around and around and around in a circle. 
in a spiral, excuse me. But your design can be any way you want to. Don't get crazy and make something like that. We'll never get done. Okay, it's going to be on a nine by nine square and um, you get to pick out your colors. We'll have construction paper. We've got some wallpaper, some cool textures. I've got um, painted papers for you. There's some maps and you've got construction paper. So, you know, when we talked about emphasis and balance. I mean, when you look at this this quilt over here, boy, that aqua really pops out, doesn't it? Because you've got the black, and then you've got a pattern, you know, that's kind of muted a little bit. It's kind of that brownishy color, even neutral, but that aqua really just just pops, you know. And I, I think this one's really cool. You can see the rectangles. You're cutting out rectangles. You're going to be making a design like that. Uh, a lot of these. Let me kind of scroll a little bit more. Let's pop out of that. So I don't want you to get itty bitty tiny. I mean, if you worked on maybe a few rows of those, not, you're just doing a square. Don't get so complicated and caught up with the minutia that we can't get this done. Okay. But on your sketch paper, you know, look at some of these designs. I mean, that's cool. Just if you did something like that, rectangles um that's kind of neat you know and they only used the red and the off-white colors you've got to pick kind of your color palette when you finish your design and you can go and look and you know what's my focal point here well it kind of all those angles over here kind of point in towards that green center doesn't it so and these are some of the quilts hanging up. Where's that? Another college. So I want you to look at some of these designs. Yes, some of these are very geometric. Look, you've got triangle, 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 triangle. What? Square. What? Giant triangle. How cool is that? It really breaks up the monotony and kind of catches you off guard and go, how neat is that? So it's kind of fun and random ish not cut exactly perfect and that's okay see we've got a variety of patterns solids you get to choose that path um this is um probably one of those quilts that's made up of many people have done different quilting squares and then they're sewn together to make a, a large quilt so, you know, looking at some of these, if you want to do something that's very geometric, you do you. You want to do something that's kind of weird and funky, you do you. You pick out the design that you want to make. How neat is this? Look at that red and black. And then you've got, oh, look, florals and pastel colors. I mean, how contrasting is that? So I want you to look at some of these designs, you know, and think, I just want to do rectangles. I like triangles. I want to make something that's eh, a little different. We're working on a square, okay? So let me come back over here to me. Here we are. So this is my, my G's Bend um, original, okay, that, was, that I bought. You know, and it's got a circle to it, you know, geometric. It's got, you know, the, the quarter of the, cir the circle here, and it's got different pieces. They're not exactly the same width. That's okay. The edges, you know, this is all hand sewn. I mean, look at the edge here. you got a little, you can't see it. You've got a little bit of yellow up here in this corner. You've got a rectangle here. You've got one that kind of comes around the edge a little bit, one over here, the burgundy. I mean, it's kind of kind of different. So this is what we're going to do with ours. On your idea page, now I was just kind of brainstorming on my piece of paper. So the first thing you want to think about, you got your idea paper out in your pencil. We want to think about, do you want a border or not? There were plenty that 
didn't have a border, went edge to edge. Totally cool. If you want something that goes all the way around the edge, because we already know it can be very different, you can break that up, okay? Um, and then on the inside, emphasis. Make creating a focal point. You can do that with color. You can do with that with a shape. You can doing that with a uh, size or contrast. Contrast in some way. Dark next to a light. Something round next to something angular. Pattern versus solid. That kind of thing. Uh, in my example, what's the focal point? Well, is that big yellow thing with the green and the stuff on it, right? You've got busy, 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 some solids in there, and boom, you got a piece of yellow. Stands out. It's all by itself. Okay? All right. So we've got some ideas, and I want you to create your own idea. Do you want to use the strictly go geometric? Go geometric. You want to kind of freeform a little bit of these? That's fine. Some of these I got a little crazy and complicated because, you know, that's sometimes what I do. But I, I, I kind of patterned mine after this one, and then I kind of changed it a little bit. Hopefully it will focus there. Uh, you know, and some of the, the L's where my paper, I didn't have enough paper to do the L, I broke it into pieces and did a rectangle and then cut out another rectangle. Now you're like, Miss Miller, how am I supposed to do all of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the plan. You're gonna come up with your idea. Then you're gonna get your nine by nine piece of paper. And you're gonna draw your design. You're not gonna need a ruler, right? G's been kind of free form. So you're looking at it going, oh my gracious. Yeah, it's a little complicated. But you're like, why is she putting numbers and stuff on this? Well, the numbers and stuff, because we're putting together a puzzle. This is going to be um, our template. And the way that we're going to do this, you're going to get a second sheet of paper next week. And this week, you're going to have, you've got your idea page. And once you have your idea, yes, Miss King, I have my idea. I'm ready for my nine by nine piece of paper. You're going to fill that square with that one idea. So I was kind of pattering this uh, ish around this one, except I, uh, it was getting a little crazy. Okay. I was trying to simplify it a little bit more. I might erase some of these lines. I'm not sure. So simplify. So I went edge to edge. And you notice I wrote top up here and top on the back. And I probably need to put my name on my paper because, you know, sometimes I'm a silly person and I misplace things in my own house. So now by today in the class, you should have your designs created. And I'll tell you about the numbers in a minute. And think about your colors and your focal point. I think my little squares here are going to be my focal point, my emphasis that I want to stand out. So I want to pick some colors that are going to be interesting to me. Um, I found some wallpaper. Uh, there's some cool painted papers there. I think I've used a lot of my stuff. I'm going to use that map. Again, because I didn't bring home a lot of your stuff because I wanted you to have your stuff. Got some of that blue and white, that black paper. Figure out what's your colors. You want to go work with just two colors? Do you want just construction paper? Do you want something that's solids and then maybe a pop of a pattern for something? Pick out your colors today. Now, next time, because I... I uh, and Miss King might kill me if I tell you, we're going to start this today. Um, how we're going to do this. So this is going to be my new piece of paper. And I'm going to write top up here too. And my name. Now, how we're going to make our G's Bend quilt. Very important. 
So I'm going to start up here, number one. Well, number one has number two in there, and, and we're going to kind of cut that out all together. So number one. You notice you're not doing that this week. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next week. So here is me. This is my template. We don't want to lose this because this has, we're going to cut these out and trace them on top of our painted paper, whatever paper that you picked, and trace them and then place them on top of the other square. So it's exactly as you designed it. Uh, see? Now, how to do this part? We don't want to draw on top of our pretties. Okay? We want to keep our pretties pretties. So, this is very important. You turn over your paper, and I don't want to see my number. I want to turn over my number and put it to the edge of the paper, please. So, I turned over. This is my square that I cut off. And I want this big green funky paper to be what I'm going to be tracing for that square. I'm going to take that square and I turn it over so I do not see my number. I do not see my number. And I'm going to trace that edge. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so this is number one. All right, then I'm going to cut out number one. Okay, and you're going, but Miss Miller, there was a number two. I know there was a number two. So, here's my number one. Now, for wallpaper, we're probably going to use that Eileen's Tacky Glue because that's just some good stuff. Now, you don't need to go crazy with the Tacky Glue because it's tacky. It's tacky. Um, get yourself a little bit on the edge. Remember, store it upside down, smeary, smeary on the edges, because it's not going to go anywhere, and put it in your corner. All right, so that's number one. Now I'm going to cut number two. Hello. Now you're going to get an envelope today, too. Now the envelope is to put your um the papers that you've chosen here's my number two the papers that you've chosen and get my stuff out of my way oh let's do red okay so i want to do red and all in your um sorry i guess i tried you're going to take put your papers that you've chosen in your envelope your little folded over envelope put your name on your envelope uh, put your idea page in there, and you're going to be putting this in there. So you're going to be choosing some of your colors that you want to use next week. Now, painted papers, there's only so many of them. Uh, wallpaper, mm, construction paper, we've got that. Okay, let me get back to my number two here. And let me trace that little guy out. Now. Remember, I traced it, when you're talking about your painted papers and everything, definitely going to need the tacky glue to glue this on top of the, uh, the wallpaper, because the wallpaper doesn't like to stick to stuff. And let's see, where do I need to put this? I'm going to put this up here. I'm just going to turn it over. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so there's my number one and number two. Ta -da! Uh -huh. All right, and then you're going to keep working. Um, and I only numbered this portion because you're only going to get so much done. Okay, you notice I keep putting in number f the top. That's very important, so you always know where you are. So I'm going to cut out the next piece, number four. You always want to start at the edge. You don't want to start in the middle because then if you get it cattywampus, the whole thing's kind of messed up. So number four up here. So I kind of like this black paper because it's just kind of cool. Now, in order to get this part, remember, we don't want to draw on our pretty, 
pretty side. So you turn your paper over. Then I'm going to take my numbered, numbered piece, turn it over onto the back, okay? And then I'm going to trace, put it right to the edge. Don't go to the middle of the paper. That makes me crazy. Go to the edge so you're not wasting all this fabulous paper because you might need it somewhere else in your design. Okay? It does. It makes me crazy. Don't make me crazy. All right. So, and then, so number four goes right up here at the top. Boop. Just like that. Um, you don't, remember, you don't need a lot of the tacky glue. Go around the edge. Store it upside down. Please don't lose the tops to the glue, the my, my tacky glue. Because that's some good stuff. So there's number four. All right. And then I can go down and go, what's number three? And I can cut out that one. So, see, and that goes right there. So then you figure out, well, what color do I want to put there? What about some of that brown? I'm going to, put some, oh, I'm going to do some more black. So remember, to turn it over. Turn this over. Line it up. Get it close to the edge of whatever you're doing. Don't throw out scraps because you never know when you need a little, little piece of something. Okay. Remember, if you're like, oh, which way is this supposed to go? You've already got the puzzle. Right? You already have the puzzle. This is the part that we already have done. Okay? So, and then I can go, oh, there it goes. Fits right into my puzzle. Turn it over. So, we're always drawing on the back side of the paper that you choose. Always. You're always, when you're cutting out a piece, you're always turning it over so you don't see your number, right? You don't see your number. So see how we're, we're doing this? There's number four. There's number three. Okay? This is going to be so cool. Yeah, it's going to take some time, but it's like a big puzzle. And you get to draw it. It doesn't have to be complicated. So today's task, um, I'm going to leave some of these G's bin, G's bin, I'm still sharing, still presenting, G's bin quilts up for you to get some more, oh, that's cool. Um, sorry, there's a chicken. This one's a little bit more geometric, simple plan. You know, this one is so cool because it's made out of jeans. See this one with the, see the pockets that have been removed? This from the old work clothes, working out on the farm. Um, and once you have your idea, you know, sketch a bunch of stuff out on your idea page. Border or no border, geometric or more kind of mm, winging it. And then once you have your idea on your white square that you're going to get, draw it big. Don't get teeny tiny and caught up in minutia. Like this picture right here. No, that's a lot. Don't you think? We're just doing a square. So if you did something simple like that, okay. Uh, looks like it's got white, black, and gray. Okay. But keep it simple. Not all that. And remember, like in your borders, look at her border. You've got gray, and then, whoop, there's some white. And there's some white. Have fun with it and be kind of random. Random is good. Okay? So here's some more. You know, if you just want to do big blocks. Oh, that's a kid's project. You can do big blocks. Think of your color scheme. You want to just do one or two colors? Do you want to just use plain colors or do you want to do something that's got pattern on it? Totally up to you. We have wallpaper, painted paper, uh, maps. That's interesting. And construction paper. So work out your design first. 
once you finalize going this is my design i think it's cool draw it large on your second white piece of paper make sure that you write top top at the top okay get your name on the back draw large after you get it drawn large start in a corner and start with your numbering remember i started right up at the top number four i started with number one number two here's three and four okay so take your time do it simply don't get crazy okay and we'll get this put together when you have your design drawn out and numbered some you can go and pick out some colors now if it's construction paper we can always get more construction paper painted paper and wallpaper mm, okay so if you are able to start today you know don't go crazy and start doing big ginormous things start at the edge cut out one piece remember all of this is going to go in your little folder in your little envelope okay so that we don't lose it and then if you have oh i need the rest of this paper and this paper anything that you need goes in that folder okay hope that is sufficient enough for you um I'm going to leave this up so you can see some more G's bin. Look, you've got diagonals. That's kind of cool. Look at the patterns and solids. You create what you want. So get your design done first. Okay, I will, I'm going to sign off and she can reshow this and turn um, the volume off so you can see how to do this again step by step. All right, guys, have a great time. Have fun designing your G's Bend quilt. This is going to be cool. It's like a big puzzle. Can't mess it up. Okay, we're going to have fun creating this. So I will see you next week. Bye.